Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saga 960. A real pleasure of mine to have Jennifer Beal back on uh, my radio show tonight. And uh, Jennifer is a really interesting person. She's a, a community builder, a collaborator, a networker. She uh, she reports on a, numerous different events that are going on from a, a networking standpoint, both from a business as well as a personal standpoint. Uh, she runs uh, big uh, networking events uh, in the summer. One of the best events of the summer is her summer networking uh, event that uh, used to happen in Ontario Place. I'm not sure where she does it anymore, and she'll probably tell us, but uh, they've been just a fantastic series of events that she's run over the, the years. And today she ran a really interesting event about uh, about getting more referrals. And so I thought that we'd have her on talking a little bit about getting more referrals, about networking, about relationship building, which is effectively about community building. Jennifer mm -hmm. Beale, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me back again, Brian. It's nice to be connecting with you and your listeners. It's our pleasure. So let's start with the, the, the business aspect of this um, and getting more referrals. And you ran a session about doing so. Uh, tell me, what what did you talk about uh, during your session, your your webinar, where you were telling people how to get better referrals, more referrals? Yeah, well, we talked about, you know, why it's so important and everybody wants referrals because when you have your own business and somebody refers you a new client, you know, they're likely to become, um, they're likely to get on board really fast. You know, for example, I had a client who he would get, people, um, his clients, he's prospecting quite well. And it was like taking him six to nine months to close a deal with somebody. And most people would come in, his new clients, they'd come in around 10, 20, $30,000 um, over that, you know, they come in at six, nine months later in the, in the sales process. And then over time, they'd build trust with him and they'd, they'd have more confidence and they'd get bigger and bigger and bigger. And he would get them up to being like a hundred thousand dollars a year um, per client for himself. And when I looked at what he's doing, I suggested, hey, why not get a referral partner program going on uh, in your business? And he did. He got referral partners. And one of them referred him um, a decision maker in a very large company. And that person became a client in 14 days, like signed, sealed, everything. And the deal was $135,000. Really? So he went from six to nine months to 14 days. And he went from starting, you know, 10, 20, 30,000 with somebody coming in at 135,000. And that's the power of referrals. When somebody makes that kind of recommendation, that introduction together, trust is going along with it. And things can happen a lot faster, a lot bigger. So people want to know that they're doing business with uh, people they can trust, people that uh, come with uh, a good recommendation. Uh, so, you know, getting the referrals is really helpful. How do you go out and get those referrals? How do you deserve to get those referrals? Yeah, I think one of the things is to be really clear about who would make a good referral partner. And by the way, if people have um, jobs, you know, referrals can help as well, like recommendations and referrals for getting other positions. Or if people are without work and looking for work, then somebody can recommend them in as well. So it's kind of the same thing like a referral. And the first thing becomes who. I think it's who, who are the people that would make good partners for you in your business? And I kind of look at it this way. If you can imagine, it's like a ladder, right? Out there, um, this adventure of becoming a better networker. It's like a ladder. And on the bottom half, let's call it disengaged, where people are kind of disengaged, just doing their own thing. And on the upper half, it would be people are engaged with people at a, at a higher and higher level. And so on the bottom rung, you might find people who are kind of doing a soloist thing, everything themselves, working hard, kind of hustling, maybe doing a lot of social media marketing, digital marketing out there to, to build up followers. But the problem with that is that followers aren't going to give you referrals. They don't know you, right? They might like a post or something. They might know about you. They're not likely to put their, their name on it and refer you somebody. And then the next rung up, I would say, would be like networkers. You know, networkers are the people that are out there. They're they're wanting to build a network for their own personal, professional gain. And, um, you know, their their motto would be something like my my net worth is my network. You know, it, it everything's about them and that. And what we see is like they get contacts you know, a little bit better, a little bit up, a little maybe even know some of these people. But they still don't get referrals. We see like very low. They'll get a few referrals more than the soloist for sure. 
And when people kind of play at this long enough, if you stay with it and you want to learn and you want to increase your capability as, as being able to connect with people, there comes a time where you kind of, it, it just sort of happens. And I think it happens because of the people you're around are doing it this way. But you get to this place where you realize it's not about serving yourself. It's about serving other people. And there's this shift, this big shift that starts happening. And that's where it really takes off for people. And they start forming deeper and better connections with some of their contacts. And then that's when they start to see the referrals start happening. And, and if they continue doing it and their capability increases, I mean, we're all learning. I'm still learning all the time about how to do this. That's when doors really start opening up for even better opportunities like collaborations. You know, people And so collaborators, they build a network and then they, they go into that network and start saying, hey, how can we do things together? So I think the difference for me is, is when... You know, maybe this is lower down on the ladder when you're asking someone to give you a referral versus when people are offering to give you a referral. That's part of it, yes. And people are more likely, more inclined to offer you a referral if they trust you because they're, you know, when you make a referral, your you name it. is attached to it, right? Your reputation is attached to this because what if you refer somebody out and that to somebody and they do a terrible job and you were the person that referred them? You know, and nobody wants to put themselves in that position where their reputation is tarnished for somebody. So we're not likely to get referrals from people who don't know us well and trust us well. And so, you know, you did this whole webinar. What 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 suggestions are you giving people on how to how to get these referrals, how to cultivate a network or how to cultivate a community that are going to provide those referrals and, and provide them because they trust you? How do you how do you train that with people? Yeah, I think we need to be very intentional about it and we need to be consistent with people about what we're doing so my recommendation for people is create de design a referral partner program you know get really serious about doing all of this a referral partner program program being intentional about it and there's three components to the referral partner program number one is the people so we just talked about some of the people that are out there. My experience is soloists and, and uh, networkers don't tend to make great partners because they're still in that disengaged place, right? They're not, they're not engaging at a high enough level. But the connectors and collaborators and even the community builders, like the leaders in a community who have a lot of people around them, those people are more engaged with people. And so they make much better referral partners. And so you want to be clear about the people and also the qualities of the people. So some of the qualities would be like, um, there's lots of different types of people, but three, for example, would be like, you want a challenger. You want people who are gonna challenge and bring up the best in you. You know, maybe it's your, um, maybe it would be like, a, it could be a client or a coach or mentor, or if you have a job, maybe it's your boss. Just somebody who really wants the best out of, out of you and you know it. And so when they challenge you, you're okay with it. And uh, another type of person that you would wanna have um, in this kind of inner circle, above the line, engaged um, with people would be um, influencers. You know, you want to be connected with people who have influence with other people. Maybe they have really large networks of people that they know a lot of people with. You know, community builders often get a lot of influence uh, for people. And so you want some of those people around who can introduce you to other people. And, um, the, and then you want some innovators. You know, you want people around you that can help you solve your problems. And that really lends itself well into getting into collaborations with other people. We trust each other. You bring your, you know, each other together, maybe one person or maybe a group of people, and you start solving larger and larger problems for your clients and among yourselves. So I've always thought that the people that you want to connect with uh, to get those recommendations from, those referral firms, are super connectors. Are super connectors your influencers or are they different? But I would call them the influencers. They have a lot of influence. But here's something that I learned. Like I have a network of about 18,000 professionals, most of them in the Toronto area. I don't know most of them. I don't do business with most of them. And they probably don't know a lot about me. So not much happens there anyway. And my suggestion is rather than going for the quantity, even though a super connector may have a lot of contacts or followers, they have my suggestion for people is actually go for quality. You want to go for quality. Like you think about David's example. 
the the he was a prospector. Look, he got a hundred and thirty five thousand dollar deal to two weeks. You know, that's because somebody had some influence with another person, not because they had a large network, but they had they had the influence there and they were able to make and willing to make the introduction. I think that's the big key is 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 finding those people that are willing to make the introduction. And then I guess the question I got to ask you is how do you ask someone to mm -hmm. make that introduction for you? Let's take a break for some messages and come back in two minutes with Jennifer Beal um, talking about how you actually ask people to help you out because that that's scary. A lot of people are really nervous about uh, making that request. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be back in just two minutes with Jennifer Beal talking about getting referrals, building relationships, building community. Stay with us, everybody. Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crabby Radio Hour on Saga 960. My guest tonight is Jennifer Beal. I've known Jennifer, I think I've known you for probably about 10 years now, maybe more. Uh, you are the consummate uh, networker, uh, you're a relationship builder, you're a community builder. You just seem to connect with people so easily and so well, such that people feel like they know you. And, and so I'm surprised that you say that uh, of these uh, 15 or 17,000 contacts that you've got, that you don't think people know you. I think people know you and know you real well. Um, but uh, it's interesting that uh, you've done that so well and you're so humble in regards to your ability to connect up with people. Where we left it off uh, before the break is we were talking about asking people to make a a referral uh, to give uh, a recommendation for you. Uh, and I think a lot of people really get nervous about making that request. How do you go about asking for someone to do you the favor, do you the honor of providing a referral? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the people, like when we start becoming connectors and we start serving other people and giving referrals to another person, really warms up a relationship fast. That can really warm up the relationship and make it really easy going, hey, did you like that referral that became a client? Would you like to do more of this? Would you like to reciprocate? I think when we're looking for the people, we need to have some reciprocity in these relationships. These aren't weak ties. Um, you know, these aren't casual acquaintances. We're actually looking to build partnerships with people that can lead into doing more like collaborations. And so we, what we want to do is we want to show who we are and our generosity. Um, I like the word you use in the power of co, which is kindliness. It's kindliness, you know, giving to somebody first and uh, saying, listen, this is the kind of person I am. Here you go. That, that can really uh, warm it up. Well, it would be to build a relationship. I recommend people as part of their, um, their referral partner program, not just select the people that they want to have in there and, and create like an inner circle of referral partners, but I also recommend that they develop a connection strategy. And this is a way of staying in touch with people at the right frequency so the relationship builds. And the second part to it is that you stay memorable because the number one reason you don't get referrals is because you're not remembered. You're forgotten. And so if you forget other people, guess what? They're going to forget you. And we don't want to be forgotten. We want to be memorable. We want to be visible out in the marketplace. We want to be seen and heard and remembered. Because when that opportunity comes up for a referral, we want our name coming up. You know, first. First would be the best. But if not first, at least in the top three or four people that they would consider. And so we need a connection, a way of staying in touch with people to build the relationship. You know, and, and so how so do you stay how do you stay memorable? How do you stay memorable? Well you create a strategy and I don't mean being str strategic about the relationship like oh if I do this for you Brian then you're going to owe me. I don't I don't mean that kind of strategy because that's just manipulation. What I really mean is I get to know you and I know what you're working on, maybe a project you're working on and then I start adding value. I start creating value for you and staying in touch with you. And so I say, you know, what project you're working on? And you say, I'm working on this project. And I go, well, what do you need? And you go, well, I'd really like to make these kind of connections. Like, okay, off I go. And I do that for you. And I come back building the relationship. Um, you would call it social capital, putting, putting you know, social dollars into the bank account, which I, I love that analogy. So they can be drawn out another time. Um, but if we bring in actually reciprocity because by having a, a conversation about, hey, I'll give you referrals and I'd like you to reciprocate back. Do you think you can do that for, with me? You know, would you be willing to? Do you know me well enough? Do you trust me enough that you'd be, be willing to to make those kind of recommendations? And so the conversation, I think it's it's a lot of it is it's how we 
um, connect with people, how they experience us, that's our character is going to come through. Are we generous? Are we grateful? I mean, I've given so many referrals over the years and not even gotten a thank you. Like it's, you know, and I don't think people are are being, you know, they're they're conscious of this or anything. It's just to get so excited and off they go, and people are so busy and they've got all their goals and everything. But as a as a connector, we're going to do it with intention. We're going to have a strategy and we're going to stay in touch with people. There's a frequency with this person. We've got to figure out how frequent we need to connect with them for the relationship to to build and build and build and uh, start exchanging the referrals through that or helping out whatever way we want to or inviting into collaborations. So this is- so I think that, uh, you know, some of the ways that uh, that I've either found personally and or heard of uh, being memorable is is the the card. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, the thank you card or the or the whatever the card is, uh, but sending something in the mail or, or giving something to someone that's a card that they put on the desk or they put on a, their fireplace mantle or something like that that says thank you, uh, I think is very powerful. Uh, and so I think that, uh, you know, the use of the gift card is, uh, is really helpful. I think that... Um, yeah, you know, the other thing that I've heard that people do is is they'll actually print a picture. No one has printed pictures anymore. They've got you know pictures that uh, they have on Facebook or uh, that they're just sending around uh, virtually. But to actually print a picture of you with that other person and give it to that individual, I think is you know hugely powerful to say you know this is something that uh, I remember you by. Uh, you know, my mom always used to say whenever you go to someone's house, you got to take a gift, whether it's a bottle of wine or something like that. Um, I think the housewarming gift or the or the the gift for the dinner is really critical and and you know um, something that expires uh, or is used up like wine or flowers is nice but if you can think about something that's going to hang around a little bit longer that's yeah. a little bit more memorable that's going to have some relevance uh, to your relationship um, I think that's really uh, really helpful um, and so I think those are some of the things that uh, that are memorable I think that uh, one of the other things is people too often remember. Um, people uh, in social media via birthdays uh, or uh, or things like that. I think what's really memorable is either important events that you recognize or the anniversary of important events. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, if someone graduates or someone gets a, an award or something like that, it's helpful to, uh, to, uh, to make a comment. But a year later, it's really helpful to remind people that, you know, a year ago, I was at the special dinner to commemorate your... Uh, getting this award, uh, I think, is something that makes you very memorable. So I think I, I had a client once and what he would do is he'd look through the paper and see all of the um, awards or the promotions that people had gotten. And then he would put it on his letterhead and he would send them a letter. And he often when he eventually met the people would go in their office and it was actually framed on the wall. So you're right about having something tangible that they can hold on to. I got uh, an email from, uh, not an email, I got a postage mail um, from Jim Pattison um, uh, once. Uh, I had worked for Jim Pattison back uh, from 1997 to 2000. And it was sometime in the, in, in the, the subsequent five years or so where I, I was in the paper. Uh, I got a promotion and, uh, and he had cut out the clipping from the newspaper of the promotion and scrawled upon it, congratulations, Brian, and had sent it to me in the mail. Um, and, you know, it's interesting. Maybe his secretary did it. He didn't even do it. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, and it was just a scrawl. Congratulations, Brian. But the fact that I got in the mail mm -hmm. uh, a scrawl from a billionaire uh, recognizing uh, my achievement uh, and that he noticed that I'd gotten that achievement was really special to me and very that, memorable. That is really special. And the incident is really memorable about him. And you are memorable to him as well, just based on what you said. That's incredible. That's great. That, these are these are all really great examples. And people can come up with an infinite number of ways that they can add value into other people's lives, build these relationships, and think think about it intentionally, create a strategy for it. And um, then ultimately, the third thing that we need to have is we need to have a system. You know, you've got the people, you've got the process now. Now we got to put some tech on it to make it super simple or people won't do it. Um, a recent stat I heard is that 50% of professionals are not networking because they don't have time. So you can imagine, like, if you start thinking about all of this, it sounds like it could take a lot of time and it could. So if we can put some of it into a system, automate some of it, or just even have it handy so it's ready to go. We know who the people are. We know when we need to reach out to them and the frequency with them. And we actually go and we do this, you know, putting it into a system. It could take as little as you know, 10 or 15 minutes a week. 
I think about the power of that in a business, getting a referral from just spending something like 15 minutes a week compared to how much time are people spending creating videos and, you know, postings and all of these things that people are doing, writing a blog post and wanting to. So that 15 minutes, what are you doing that 15 minutes a week? Yeah, well, you get on and you're, you're doing what you just said, some of those things, you know, you're acknowledging them, you're thanking them, you're you're inviting them to something maybe 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 you're going to an event you go I got a ticket for you too while you come with me um I love that you said that about you know you're going to a dinner party you're going to take a gift right I love that get get together in person with people and people are people are starving and you you and I both know right like the greater Toronto area has been designated the loneliest place in Canada like people are lonely people are wanting connection and they're not getting out as much as they they did you know um pre-pandemic so do these things to, to activate other people, build that connection, let people know that they belong with you. That's really important. So you had mentioned a couple of minutes ago, having a connection strategy. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, have that, those are some of the aspects of the connection strategy. It's what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, how, how frequently are you going to do it, all of the things. And you're doing it in alignment with not what you want, but what the other person wants. What so there's a... Uh... There's a, a practice that uh, former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney followed that uh, I liked a lot, I, and I try to do it. Uh, and what he did is every week um, on Sunday night or Monday morning, he would, uh, instead of just doing the to-do list of the things that you got to do, he would do a call list of the people that he wanted to call. And he knew that during the week he would have, you know, dead time, uh, whether it be when he was waiting or in the car or doing something uh, where he had some available time. And he would call the people on that call list and he rotated the people on the call list and he thought about the people that he should be calling uh, because it was a birthday or because it was an anniversary or because it was something that was going on or a death or whatnot uh, in their family. And uh, and he would make sure that he would call them and he would strike them off. And uh, it was amazing that, uh, uh, you know, at the at the at the funeral uh, for Brian Mulroney this past year, so many people co commented about how he was so busy, so successful, but he had time for people and he made those personal connections. And I think this practice of actually having the call list uh, every week where he made a point every week of, uh, of making sure that he connected with people was probably pretty important. That's a connection strategy right there. Beautiful, brilliant, you know, that it, that it was done. So, um, you know, we can do these things. We just have to think about them and be intentional about them. And certainly if there's no reward for doing it in business, I certainly wouldn't recommend anybody do it. But there is. You know, 84% of business to business buyers, did you know they start with a referral, their buying process? With a 84%. referral. 84%. And right now, those B2B buyers, they are so hard to get access to. because They don't have a lot of money to spend. You can, you can LinkedIn, you can email them, text them, phone them. It's not likely they'll take your call. But if somebody knows that they need somebody just like you and they make the recommendation, you'll get, you'll get the call. No, that's uh, that's good incentive. Eighty four percent of the of deals come from a referral. That's pretty amazing. Uh, we're yeah. gonna have to take an we have to take another break for some messages and be back in just two minutes with Jennifer Beal, the consummate networker. Stay with us, everyone. Back in two minutes. Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crumby Radio. While we're Saga nine sixty, my guest tonight is Jennifer Beal, uh, who uh, builds better networks. Uh, she's uh, a consummate networker. She puts on big events. She uh, sends out emails on a regular basis about all the different networking events that are going on. She is a connector. Uh, she's a community builder. She knows people and uh, knows people well and knows how to make those connections. And uh, just uh, this past uh, week, she's done a seminar, a webinar on uh, getting more referrals and how to get those more referrals. And so I uh, thought I'd reach out to Jennifer and talk about how does one do that? Jennifer, there's a concept I wanted to ask you about to see if it makes any uh, sense to you. Uh, Mark Grunvader, a sociologist, uh, wrote a, a major uh, paper at one point in time about the strength of weak links. And he mm -hmm. talked about how there's bonding links, which is those tight, strong uh, bonds with uh, with people you know well, with people that are in the same department or the same you know, race or the same religion or the, the same something or other. Uh, and uh, those are those, those strong bonds. And he said those are important, particularly in implementation of something or other. But it's mm -hmm. those weaker links, those bridging uh, links uh, that you have to, to other people. 
um, uh, he called them the weak links in uh, in life mm -hmm. that are even more important because they're the people that can you know connect you to people you don't know to ideas that you're not aware of yet to uh, to different races to different religions to different uh, departments to different functions to different jog occupations to to people that are going to know you know potential uh, spouses that uh, or mates that you may not uh, be aware of because if you already knew everybody then you you know all the potential mm -hmm. mates and then so if it's uh, you know, someone new, that's uh, going to be the opportunity that's going to come along. Uh, and he said that job opportunities come the most from those weaker links, those bridging links. And bonuses come from those people that uh, have those bridging links because they're the ones that can bring you new ideas and new connections mm -hmm. and maybe new referrals. And so one of his concepts is think about strengthening those bonding relationships, those strong relationships, yes. But really think about strengthening and broadening and expanding those weaker links, those bridging links, uh, those bridging relationships that you've got. And that you got to think about both of those uh, different types of relationships and not just the ones that you know, the friends that you know, the contacts that you know so incredibly well. What do you think about that? Yeah, I absolutely agree with all of that. You know, these weak ties that we have again there is a tie like maybe it was somebody that we went to university or college with or maybe it's somebody we worked with before peers um past employers past clients you never know where somebody's going to land in their life and so there are those weak ties but there's still a tie of some sort that we knew each other at some time depending on on how much we knew them um the research stands for it that that, that actually does happen and so if we first focus in on building contacts as a networker. And then what we want to do when we want to get more engaged with people. So we have all those contacts, those weaker ties, and those are fine to have. What we want to do is we want to become more engaged with some of them. We want to pick and select some of those people that if we built a relationship with them, bigger and better things could happen for us in the way of referrals, collaborations. So the weak ties themselves, I don't see those people being willing to just step in there and start collaborating with us. There needs to be a relationship there as well. And so I would say, you know, you don't need a lot of people in your inner circle. You just need the right people, quality there. And absolutely, you're going to have lar a larger number of contacts. I told you I have like 18,000 or something, but I don't I don't even know that there's weak ties with all of those people. Like some of them, they're just a, a name. And uh, for whatever reason, they wanted to connect with me um, or maybe we met in passing. So the weak ties, absolutely. We need to have beyond our inner circle, we need to have this larger um, network of people. And we also, you know, it's interesting. If you imagine like three concept concentric circles in the middle, we're there. And just around us is our inner circle. You know, that group of people, 12 to 18 is plenty. It doesn't have to be a lot. It just has to be the right people. And they got to care about us and want to bring out our best. And we got to care about them and want to bring out their best as well. And then in the weaker ties that um, are around all of that. And the, the circles, like it's permeable. Like some people that are weak ties could come in and be in our inner circle. Some people in our inner circle may move out and become more of a weaker tie. We don't keep building the relationship with them. So it is changing all the time um, in our lives as well. Would some of them stay our whole life? Maybe that would be nice because long-term relationships really are the best. When you're going to an event mm -hmm. um, and you wanted to try to create those new contacts, those new weaker ties, uh, those relationships, how do you do it? People are so scared about you know, going to those kinds of events. Any any tricks of the trade, any suggestions uh, for people on how they best do that? Yeah. Well, if you knew me 23 years ago, you'd know I was very socially awkward and walking into a room with people I didn't know. That was just like horrific for me. Um, and it was getting around people like mentors and coaches and some peers and going back and getting familiar with people where it really opened up for me. And then I loved it because it worked so well. Um, yeah, last night I, I went out, I was invited late in the afternoon to an evening um, event last night and um, I went, I, I decided to go. And when I got there, I was early and I saw all of these people there that like they had exhibitor tables and I wanted to meet them all because they'd be great connections for me. And I waited for the person who invited me to show up because that person already had the relationships with all of them and then went and made the introductions for me. 
And then this morning when I, you know, sent out emails to everybody, they remembered me. And I put my friend's name in there as well. Last night, my friend introduced us together. I'd like to reconnect. You mentioned we could meet. When would you like to do that? And so I think going with somebody who has some relationships, you know, it's warm, not cold, is one of the ways that you can do it. And the other thing is if you show up without, um, you know, somebody that can help assist with the relationship building, one of the things I do is I walk in the room and I look for people who are smiling. Um, there is neuroscience to this. When people are smiling, we will smile back. So I look for people I, that are smiling at first and I go and I get warmed up. And what we want to look for is we want to look for like odd number groups of people, not even. Because if you're an even, they could be paired and you walk in and bust it all up. But if there's three join, you're the fourth. And even if the other two people are talking, you can start talking to the third person or you can be part of the whole group conversation. Look for people who are smiling, have some good energy because you're going to pick up on that as well and then get involved. And once you're warmed up, look around the room and look for people who are maybe standing alone because they're not feeling like they're part of it. They could be the ones that were like me 23 years ago, like, why am I here? Will people like me, you know, and we worry so much about, will anything happen here? Should I have come? Shouldn't I? And um, go and warm up with those people. Once you're warmed up, you will make the best friend. If you can go and make somebody feel comfortable in the room. I do like the idea about looking for the people that uh, are off to the side and uh, alone and uh, and going and uh, and connecting up with them, befriending them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think some of these suggestions that have worked well with me is that make that uh, uh, introduction for someone else first. Because uh, if, if you know someone uh, that would benefit um, meeting the person that you're just chatting with, make that introduction. And then you know, whether it's reciprocity or whether it's just uh, karma, I think what ends up happening is that, uh, uh, you know, one of those two people that you just introduced uh, will introduce you to someone that could uh, be a benefit to you. Uh, and so therefore, people always look for that introduction first or that referral first. No, give it first. And if you give it first, then uh, you'll get it back in uh, in multifold. Uh, multifold. Um, another kindliness. suggestion. That's a great, a great example of kindliness. Yeah. Uh, and then I think one of the other suggestions that uh, someone gave me at one point in time that I, I try hard to do, um, and I think it really works whenever I get the time to do it, is to check out who's going to be at the event ahead of time. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can often do this just through, you know, Googling the names on LinkedIn or, 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 or however, and trying to find people that you really would like to meet ahead of time and uh, and send them a message saying, you know, I, I saw that you're going to be at the same event that I'm going to be at. I'd love to meet with you and chat. And then as you go to an event and you've already seen a picture of them and you know, you know what their name is and you know a little bit about why you want to meet them, you're there looking for them. And uh, and and that's, you know, so much of uh, of the reason why you're going uh, to an event is to meet interesting people that can be helpful to you or interesting to meet. Uh, that's and great. if you've done that, a little a bit of research tip. ahead of time, it makes a ton of sense. Mm -hmm. That's a great tip. You've now, you, you were saying that uh, some people get hyper-connected. Yeah. Well, I think we're hyper-connected in this world right now digitally, right? Like you can access people in so many different ways. You can be all like on social media and you might have their phone number so you could call them. You might have their email so you can email them. You can text them, you know, from your cell phone. Um, there's just so many ways to be able to reach other people. We're hyper-connected. And, you know, interesting, you would think that because we're hyper-connected, we're better connected. It's not true. We're more disengaged than ever before. It's confusing. There's so many ways to reach a person. It's just confusing. We're overwhelmed. It's complex. How do we kind of sort through all of this and find a way where we can be making meaningful connections with other people? And I really believe it goes back to having this, some kind of program that we develop where we have intentionally thought about the people, put a strategy together, and we put it all in a system so we're going to do it and do it consistently over and over and over and over again and, and intentionally want to build the relationships. Because if we're feeling a little frazzled from all of this hyper-connection where we're feeling disengaged, so is most of the other people out there. And uh, the stat I mentioned earlier, 50% of professionals saying they don't have time for networking. You know, we, we got to make time for networking. The, the more success you want, the more important your network becomes. So we've got to make time for this if we want to achieve more, if we want to do more and experience more. 
Well, I think that, you know, the unemployment statistics came out the other day showing that unemployment uh, levels are up uh, and uh, the number of people that are looking for jobs is uh, dramatically higher. Uh, and uh, the number of people that have checked out of the workforce is uh, the highest it's been in something like 20 or 30 years. Uh, and so I think it's a real issue. And, uh, you know, it goes back to so many adages uh, uh, in life. If uh, you need something, you got to develop it before you need it. So you got to develop that network. You got to develop those uh, connections. You got to develop the people that are going to give you referrals before you need them. If you wait, if you wait until you're unemployed or you wait until you actually are, you know, close to bankruptcy or you wait until your revenues are down before you actually make those connections, you've waited too long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Build the relationships before you need them. So one of the other things that I think that you're really powerful at is you actually build a community which is different than just building, you know, one-off relationships. And I want to ask you, how do you actually build a community, do you think? Yeah, well, thank you for your kind words about all of that. This is what I think. I think it just happens. If somebody decides that they want to learn and expand and um, get a, a greater capacity for being able to connect and engage with other people, if people actually make that their reason of, the way to go through life, always just getting better and better and better and better at this. And you become this connector and you get engaged and you're building strong relationships. And that can lead to some collaborations where, look, you can start helping people be more successful in their life. They're helping you as well. What starts to happen, I think, very naturally, is people just start to gather. You know, people want to be around people like this. And so, I, you know, some people make it official. Maybe they have membership clubs or an organization people can belong to. You can make it official. But I think there's this unofficial way of becoming a community builder. And that is from being generous, being gracious, being filled with gratitude, acknowledging other people, raising them up, bringing out their best. Who doesn't want to be around people like that? We all do. And so we want to be those kind of people in the marketplace and we want to raise up other people to be like that in the marketplace. And we want people who help raise us up more as well. And so I want to give you build. I want to give you my assessment of how you do it, because I think that oh. you're really special at doing it. Um, a couple of weeks ago, you invited me to go to a dinner um, and uh, I didn't know what I didn't know anyone at that uh, dinner, um, but I made some really interesting connections at that dinner. Um, and this has got to be the fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh event that you've uh, you've invited me to. And, and so therefore you are that super connector. And I think, you know, you can make one connection or one referral and that's beneficial. There's no question. But when you start making a couple and then and then you take the two people that you've connected and introduce them to a third or fourth, you've created a network, you've created a community, you've created something that, uh, you know, goes together. And then what you do at the events that you put on, all of them, you have some fun. And I think that, you know, too many of these events I go to are all about work. Um, and, uh, and, and you know, that's helpful and it's important. You got to do work. But once you add a little bit of fun to it and you've got that sort of common thing that you can think about or remember that was enjoyable, that was fun, that was a, a pleasure, a celebration, or whatever it is. Um, you know, I, I remember, you know, music was some of the things that you added to, to some of your events. Um, and, um, and I think that that makes, makes communities because I think a community is not just two people. Um, and it's not just a bunch of connections. A community is when, when numerous different people come together. And so I think that super connectors like Jennifer are the people that can build community. And then they have a rallying cry, a, a fun event, a fun, something rather that, that brings the people together. What do you think of that? I think, yes. Yeah. We want to have experiences with with people. And, you know, if you look at, I mean, I think it's been longer than 10 years that I've known you, Brian, and I've invited you in and you've invited me into so many different things. And they've been experiences that we've had together. And I think you're right on when it comes to community and people feeling like they belong. There needs to be some things that are going on that 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 is mutually, you enjoy music, you enjoy an event, you enjoy doing business, you enjoy talking, you enjoy connecting people together. I mean, when you start to to do all of this, it brings so much joy into our lives. It really does. And then that's when it be, people become memorable and we become memorable. So um, I, I think you're right on that. We, we, we need to think about what we're doing with the people and that connection strategy. 
not just letters, not just phone calls, not just emails, but certainly can we create an experience, um, invite somebody out to something. You mentioned a little while ago that you thought that we're disengaged after the pandemic. And, uh, and I think you're right in that regard. And it's a little bit surprising. Maybe we'll take a final break. And when we come back, I'll ask you why you think that is and, uh, and, and, and how we can, can combat that. Uh, stay with us, everyone. We're going to be back in two minutes with Jennifer Beal talking about getting referrals, um, making connections, uh, building, building a network, building a community. Stay with us, everyone. Back in two. Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crumby Radio Hour Saga 960. My guest tonight is Jennifer Beal uh, of uh, Build Better Networks. Uh, she's a networker, a, a community builder, a wonderful lady that uh, really does a great job of, of connecting people up to business opportunities, giving them training on, uh, on getting referrals, on uh, doing better business, and frankly, just being a better person and uh, and creating friends and and building the community. And so I really appreciate all the work that you've done in that regard, Jennifer. I got to ask you, you made an interesting comment. You said that uh, people are more disengaged after the pandemic and or or not as engaged as they were uh, before. And mm -hmm. um, and I think that, you know, what happened in the pandemic is is people really stopped going out to events, stopped connecting up with new people, sort of isolated themselves. And I worry and wonder, you know, why we haven't sort of gone back to normal, why we've still sort of stuck in some of that isolation. Do you have an assessment of why? Or am Yeah, I this is not regard? scientific or anything, but I'll share with you my opinions on this. Um, first off, this whole loneliness and isolation and disengagement has been going on for a long time. It started like way back in the 70s. Why it happened at that time? Well, it, there's a number of things. But at that time, there was um, a real push on for self-sufficiency and independence. Um, and that was made um, broadly through psychology that people should stand on their own two feet and figure things out. So I think that's sort of the start of people feeling like, you know, if they are independent and self-sufficient, they get a award for that, you know, you get a badge for that or something. I, that's just my opinion. I think that could be part of it. And that um, when the pandemic came, we were on this trend anyway of isolation. Like it was something like 25%, this is 2011 stat, 25% of the, um, population claimed they didn't have anybody they could turn to if their world bottomed out. 20, one in four, 25% of people in 2011. So the trend was already starting. It was already moving forward this way. And then the pandemic came and it was exacerbated by many numbers of things. And you mentioned, you know, a couple of the things, the isolation, Look, a lot of people invested in their homes and made them nice and comfortable. I mean, you can stay at home and cook in your renovated kitchen now if you got the appliances or you learned how to cook and you're really enjoying that. Maybe you like Netflix and you want to sit and watch movies and you can become really addicted to comfort. I mean, yesterday when somebody invited me in the mid-afternoon to go to an evening event, immediately it's like, that's too short notice. And then I'm like, no, I'm going. I'm getting out of my comfort zone. And I was very aware that's what it was. I mean, comfort's addictive, probably more addictive than some of those, those narcotics that are out there. We like to be comfortable. And during the pandemic, we made our little mess, right? Because we couldn't go anywhere. Really. We couldn't socialize with just anybody anymore. And so we got out of the habit of going out to these other events and we got into other habits um, during that time. So I think that's part of it. I think another part of it, I don't know the psychology in this, again, this is my opinion, but they made us afraid of other people. There was a lot of fear put in that people could make you sick. And we, they asked us and we, and we obliged to do a lot of different things so that people were safe. But there was this like, stay away from people. So I still see signs out in our community that say six feet apart, you know? Um, and then you just kind of chuckle about it because it's been so long since we had to do that. But there was this, I believe there was just this, I'm, I need to be concerned about other people. And, and that was that was put quite heavily into us for a long period of time. And I don't think it's left that readily or easily. 
And then on top of it, just add in all the social media that we started using and becoming habituated to during the pandemic as a means to communicate with people getting on social media. Um, it's something like 54% of baby boomers um, experience loneliness. Um, and loneliness is sort of classified like they feel lonely like three times a week where they're disconnected from people, from all people, and they're feeling lonely about it. And that's baby boomers. And you think, okay, as you get older, you get more isolated, maybe you retire, your life changes, people, you know, your kids move out or whatever. But here's the interesting thing, Brian, is that as you go down in age, the numbers go up astronomically. Now I might get these backwards, but I do know the numbers. Um, I think it's 71% for Gen Zers, 54% baby boomers, 71% of Gen Zers are experiencing loneliness frequently, regularly, all the time. More younger people. And then you go up to the millennials, 79%. 79%. That's eight out of 10 people. The young people out there are experiencing this loneliness, this disconnection from others, this disengagement frequently. So something has to be done about all of this. It really does. You know, we've got to shift this for um, the older people and also for the the younger people as well. We've we've got to be intentional about connecting with one another. That anyway, that's my take on it. Those are my opinions. So I'll give you my assessment. I think that it's social yeah. media. I do think that, and and I think that may be consistent with the numbers of isolation that you identified as the as the increased use of social media goes up, the sense of isolation also goes up, which is a little bit, uh, you know, counterintuitive because one thinks that you're on social media to to be, you know, related to people, to con connect it with people. But I think what it is, is because you're, you feel like you're connected because you're seeing pictures of them mm -hmm. or, you know, seeing what their comments are on Twitter or whatever, but you're not actually interacting with them. And, uh, and I think that that interaction and, and that personal face-to-face -face interaction that we're having, even though we're virtual right now, but it's so critically important to be face-to-face -face with people, to actually see the, you know, the, 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 the facial uh, expressions uh, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, what you can read through body language that you just don't get uh, if, uh, if what you're looking at is a, is a static picture or a, a pre-planned uh, video on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or something like that. So I do think we've got to get out and re-meet people in real life. Mm -hmm. Let's get off the virtual stuff. Let's get back out. And so one of the things that I'm encouraging right now, I'd love to eliminate this whole loneliness thing that's in the greater Toronto area. I'd like to be part of all of that. And one of the things that I'm doing is I'm raising up people, I call them gatherers. I want to raise up people who will take the initiative and just reach out to some people and say, hey, let's get together for a meal. You know, it could be in business, could be personal, it could be community, it could be whatever. But hey, why don't we get together? We need people who will initiate all of this. I call them gatherers. And I'm starting to do a lot more of that ourselves. And I think that if people recognize what they experience, other people experience as well, and can take the initiative, be intentional about it, reaching out and connecting with people, we can really reduce these numbers down and let people know, hey, I care about you and you belong and you're part of my community and we're going to do this life thing together and we're going to do it well. What a wonderful idea. Thank you so much. That's incredible. Jennifer, do you want to tell everyone about your summer event that's coming up? Well, thank you. Yeah, um, I do this event. This is my 20th anniversary, Brian. I hope you come. It's on Wednesday, August the 14th, and we are doing a patio party and at the Corktown uh, Staples patio, rooftop patio. There will be drinks, there will be food, and there'll be about 100 people that are getting together to connect. Um, so it's an event for people if you're stuck in the city, you don't have a cottage to go to in mid-August, but you want to do business, then this event, it's been running for 20 years, um, come on down and, uh, and hang out with us. We'd love to have more people. Jennifer Beal, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Brian. Always a pleasure. It's our show for tonight, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I remind you, I'm on every Monday through Friday at 6 o'clock on 960 AM. You can stream me online from anywhere at www.saga960am.ca. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Jennifer.